homegrown tomatoes. Homegrown tomatoes. Nothing I'd be without homegrown tomatoes. <laughs> There's only two things that money can't buy, and that's true love and homegrown tomatoes. Macon, what was that song you were just singing? I got beans, greens, tomatoes, potatoes, yams, chicken, potatoes, potatoes. You haven't heard that? Hey, everyone, we're live on the RC Groups podcast. Ha ha! That was too good not to get, Whoop-pop. you know. So simmer down right. now, simmer down. It is, and that is a simmer down moment. <laughs> I've been thinking about our simmer down, Joe Nolness, and the only problem is you are telling people to calm down, which is goes against everything. See, but, I brought that up last week. No, no, no you don't understand, guys. That's it not is cool, when you say calm it down a notch, when you say simmer down, you don't really mean simmer down. You mean it's kind of like a, it's the opposite. It's just a joke. It's sort of, uh, it, it means keep doing what you're doing. Well, I, I, I'm not going to not uh, tell people to simmer down. I just, uh, it does seem counter, <laughs> counterproductive, but simmer down now. That means that these everyone's upbeat, right? Well, everybody is, you're joining us, you missed, but you can go back and watch. Now, listen, just because you're <laughs> live doesn't mean that you saw everything. So what you want to do is go back and watch the beginning where I didn't tell the guys I was recording and we were singing songs about tomatoes. And, uh, so you do want to catch that. I think, um, we have a guest coming on. We have Mandy from the AMA. Now I sent her link and I know, I know Mandy who's not on right now was like, are you going to get me on before the show starts? And I said, no, because people tend to start talking and then we lose the good (laughs) stuff. Yeah. The pre-show. We should broadcast the pre-show show. All right. Mandy's saying she can't get on. I'm going to no. hand it over to Jason Cole. Oh, I clicked on someone's face, and that breaks a rule. <laughs> I will never see what anyone else sees from now on. Jason and Matt Gunn. Jason, uh, everybody, what's going on? What's happening? Are, yeah, are we wanting to go over stuffs, or are we going to try to get her on still before? Well, I want y'all just to do a little intro chatter, and then I'm going to grab her email and try to invite her via an email. Nice. This has happened before. Okay. Well, cool. Well, what's up, everybody? What's the temperature like over there in the Mac Gun world? Oh, my God. It's uh, 80 degrees. Not bad at all. Oh, nice. I, yeah, degrees. and this is, this is flying weather right now. It hasn't rained in, like, two weeks. Is it calm like wind like it is here too? Oh, absolutely. It is dead calm. In fact, there's a layer of smog over the city in the distance. You can just see it sitting there. So it's good flying weather. I went flying the other night with the recruit. We'll talk about that in a little bit. I also flew the uh, mini turbo duster from Legacy, the one that I did the review on back at a long time ago, actually. Loving it. Had a good time flying at the Aurora Field, which I've never been to. Yeah, so speaking of that, I've always been slightly jealous of your flying fields for your FPV videos. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so I put a shout be. out to the local multi-rotor club. I saw that. And said, hey, has anybody got a place where I can fly a wing? Because I, I can go to the normal model airplane fields and fly my FPV wings, but they're not great for obstacles, for, for really getting like interesting DVR onboard footage. So I was like, all the multi-rotor places that we go fly are way too small and, and you know tight for a, for a big wing. And so I asked around, and finally one guy uh, had a suggestion, and then I looked it up on the map, and I was like, this could be perfect. It looks like it's an old abandoned like resort and golf facility. Uh, like golf course. Be- you couldn't that? ask for a better place to It's to actually uh, just south of Peeler Park on the other side of the river. Okay. Peeler Park, y'all. So I am planning on going out there the next good weather day and taking my Drac and my uh, Hardcore 44 and some FPV gear, and I'm going to go fly it, capture – because w- I'm uh, putting together the mini Drac review uh, right now. And then the DVR footage I have, I can tell you this story too about the Connex Pro site. Um, anyway, I, I wasn't really happy with the footage I got, and, and, I just be, and, be, and it was because of a problem that I created for myself with the Pro site. Um, was which I'll, talk, I'll talk about briefly, but you wouldn't simmer down. I wasn't simmering down enough. That's, that's pretty good. So the pro site, uh, in the current firmware version, you've got three different, uh, modes that you can select for the camera. You've got a high performance mode, which is a 60 frames per second. I believe, um, it's a little bit lower resolution. It almost looks like analogy. It's not an H real, you know, true HD signal, analog-y. but it's, a, it's the lowest latency, you know, highest performance, uh, setting. 
Then you've got the high quality mode, which is the HD, the beautiful That's crispiness. That's the one I fly with. And it's a little bit higher latency, but not terrible. Still really flyable. And then it's got what they call a, a performance plus or quality plus or something. It's a third mode. And I heard that some guys were using that for the drone racing. I was like, okay, I'm going to try that. It looked really great, and the latency was really, really low. It was the best, I think, of both worlds. But what I didn't realize was that when you use that mode, it crops the image like oh, a weird. bunch. You got to check it out, man. I took pictures of, of the regular modes and then the, the high performance plus mode, and it cropped the crap out of the image, which is okay. It still looks awesome. CTC. But I'm, I'm used to flying wings with a really wide angle field of view, so I can, as I'm getting ready to approach a turn, I can see more around me of where I'm, you know, going to be headed. But this was so zoomed in, it was like having a zoomed in camera lens. It's weird. I bet they did that to cut down on the uh, on the data stream, right? Probably. And but for me, it made it like really difficult to fly uh, the drac um, with it because I was I just couldn't see where I was going. I was scared I was going to run into a tree, so I was flying high and. It just wasn't what I need it to be, so I've changed it back to the high quality mode, the same one that mm -hmm. you use. And I want to go back out and reshoot some onboard uh, footage. With That's some... all you need with the drag. It doesn't yeah. need. Uh, I mean, the latency is is negligible anyway. Yeah. So even on high, high quality, so I think you'll, I think you'll like it. I yeah. like how you did those antenna coming out the side like that. Yeah. Like whiskers, and the good thing is, is that you're getting them sort of clear of the fuselage. So yeah. when you're flying away from yourself, you're not blocking your feed, which I experienced a lot of with the, um, uh, with the, um, strato surfer yeah. that with it mounted right up on the nose vertically, when I'm flying away from myself, all that fuselage is covering yeah. the path of the antenna. It's no good. Yep. And then, uh, I'm, I'm probably going to order it as soon as it's available. I think it's on pre-order right now, but Connex just released a new H X camera, 720 P 60 frame per second native. Yeah. Uh, camera for the Connex. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute. They just released a new camera. They just Tell me they have a longer cable. Uh, I don't, you know, I, I haven't seen, I've just seen images of the camera itself. It doesn't show the cable. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe it comes with a longer cable. That would be awesome. But this is, it's basically the same form factor. Um, but the, a better, uh, better quality, better resolution. The, the people are going nuts over it. It looks awesome. I'm going to order one. And it's only like, awesome. I think the camera used to be $99. I think they lowered it to either $79 or $89. What? Um, so you can get just that camera transplanted into any of your existing ProSight stuff, and you're good to go. So I'm definitely going to be picking one of those up. Cool. Let's show off. Well, you know, the best thing to do when you are hunting for a new place to fly is just get right on Google Maps yeah. Start looking for fields, zoom in on it, and see if it's a private field or not. I do that. I used to spend many a nights around here, and that's how I found the spot. Was just looking at the Google Maps. I'm like, what is this giant acres, uh, acreage of uh, area to fly? And I just ended up driving over there. That's what I do every time. Yeah. Sometimes it's a bust. I'll go over there, and what you won't be able to see from the satellite view is the giant barbed wire fence across the. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> get in it. <laughs> So once once you <laughs> get through it, will be shot posted time. Right, yeah, you can't resolve that <laughs> from a satellite, or maybe you can. They're just not showing us. But um, that's how I find all my spots, and they are few and far between around here. Everything is it's same in your area. Everything is so developed, or it's solid woods. So there's not a lot of uh, open flying fields. Uh, if we're going to talk right. about that, then Jason and I have a story. We were out shooting a video. I guess it was just yesterday, and. Um, I heard somebody tromping down the dock. We were shooting a water Wait, video. Dock? Yeah, we're on a dock at the end of the dock, and I'm shooting. Where were you shooting? Dock of the bay. What were you <laughs> shooting uh, at the end of a dock? A RC boat? No. We, were, uh, we were fishing with uh, bows and arrows. And oh, bones. you guys can't We were talk flying the bow and arrow with my Mavic above with the arrow pointing down, and then as soon as we saw a fish, we pulled you the trigger and it released it. And if we <laughs> caught a fish, then I would use my expert to pull it in, you know, to yank it, it up. And, and complicated and illegal. And then <laughs> that would hook the line over. Uh, we had an RC car on the on the bank, and then that would reel the fish in. Oh, my God. So it's gonna be, I think it's going to be our number one video. It'll be, it'll be a flight test quality type of stunt video. Nice. No, actually, that's <laughs> not what we're doing. Tell them what we were flying, Jason. Oh, uh, real quick for Mr. Mean Joe, that is Otis Redding sitting on the dock of the bay. Anyway, he asked about that song. 
So we were flying, which Simidon, I'm going to just go out on a limb and say is hands down the best float flying plane that you can buy right now, and it's the Carbon Z Cessna 150 Yeah, from E-Flight and Horizon Hobby. It was so amazing. It's, it's just literally perfect for that atmosphere for flying off the lake. Uh, it looks gorgeous. It flies great. It's so smooth, so stable with AS3X. You can't help but grease the landings. You have to try to botch your landing um, and not come in smooth and grease it. It's just so easy to do. Um, so man, what a blast. We got some great footage. I recorded a little bit of onboard with some Mobius spots. Jim was on the camera. So uh, that's going to go into the review video, great. which will be out in a week or two. All right, well, maybe not in a week or two. It might be done in a week or two. We'll see when it comes out. But uh, that's that was so much fun. We had a great time. And, uh, you know, it's always fun to meet wow. the parks people. And, and they're always so uh, <laughs> so courteous and kind about my stalling. location. You're stalling. What happened? Let me just say, it's lucky I was there. <laughs> oh, really? Is that how it went down? You know, it's bad when Jim Graham is the guy who's making peace. <laughs> So he comes up and he's like, "Hey, that's a great, that's an awesome looking airplane." And he's like, and "I'm like, thanks." And I'm flying, and Jim's filming. I didn't like, notice how I wasn't something? talking. Yeah, he's like, "Are you guys shooting a commercial or something?" I'm like, "No, we're just doing this for fun." Um, nice. That's a good one. And he says, "Well, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you can't do that out here." And I'm like, "I can't do what? I can't fly my model airplane that's off the what? lake." So what are you talking about? <laughs> are you crazy? I was and flying over empty to, water. This is my favorite part. He tries to hand me his business card while I'm flying the airplane. Yeah. I look, I glance over at him. He's like trying to hand it to me. I'm like, I am, you know, <laughs> that, flying an airplane here, dude. So finally, I stopped filming and turned around and I realized that the situation is at a uh, point. And I'm like, I hear what you're saying. I get it. Yeah, yeah. What's your name again? I shake his hand. And <laughs> I'm trying to be the peacekeeper. It was, by the way, Jason, he was past peacekeeping at that point. He was. He was visibly not happy. Yeah. Well, so see, then he was like, I'm not telling you to leave either. I'm just telling you next time you need to do something. He I'm said, like, Wait, don't, I don't, you don't have to stop flying. Don't land. He Wait, said, I don't I get it. I, I'm, I'm confused. Were you on a private dock or a public dock? Uh, we were at a sailboat marina, and it was, I don't know if it's private, but it is kind of reserved for, like, the rowing. Uh, it's where they bring the giant rowboats out for the rower people. Who Jason, was, you know, had, Jason had spoken to them and said, here's the plan. And they said, no problem. Just let us get out in the lake and do whatever you want. Yeah. So, but he was saying something about the air core core of engineers. Yeah. The core of engineers. Oh, I guess they, I guess those people own the, the major lakes and stuff. And he was like, you have to have a permit to fly. I'm like, uh, I've been flying off this dock for like the past 10 years. Longer than your whole career. And he was like, and he, he like made like a funny, like a, uh, really like he was like oh and nobody's ever talked to you about this huh like he That's was being he sarcastic said. about it and i was like <laughs> actually nobody's literally ever stoking me about this at all was you're the first master? one what was his uh so title? all he had know. on was khakis and in a and a tan shirt but i did note when he left he drove off in a pickup truck with the uh seal on the side so yeah. okay. I'm so sure he, was, really he had like, some sort of authority it's yeah. not like I was droning it up and flying over people and causing problems. Hey, look who it is. Hey. What's going oh, on? I'm so happy, Mandy. I was already thinking about how I was going to apologize that you weren't <laughs> able to get on the show. Hello. Hey, everyone. This is this is Mandy from the AMA. And today, Mandy has come to talk to all of us about the AMA National Model Aviation. Mandy, what's going on? Well, um, this is our fifth annual celebration of National Model Aviation Day. Every year we host um, the Saturday before National Aviation Day. So this year that falls on the 12th. Um, we have about 100 clubs participating this year. And basically the point of it is to celebrate model flying in some way, whether that's to just go out and fly with your friends or invite the whole community out. Um, and that's kind of what we encourage our clubs to do is invite the community out, maybe host a fundraiser just to give back to your community um, and just be part of what your community is doing. Um, but basically, we really just want you to promote flying the hobby and introduce it to people that might not know um, what it's all about. 
So I was recently on a phone call explaining what I do to a higher up executive. And one of the things I made sure that I said was that I, after doing this for over a decade, you have to ask yourself, what am I doing? You know, what is my primary role in my life? At I this daily thing. Yeah, right. And so I realized that maybe the most important thing I do other than facilitate the web forum is shine a light on the hobby is emit is, as many positive ways as I can through stories, videos, Facebook posts, and all that. So that's exactly what you guys are doing, right? Yeah, we've, we've done an, a lot to try and make it easy um, to get the word out and to help clubs make it um, a great experience. We have a whole page online. It's nationalmodelaviationday.org. There's a clubs tab on there, and you can go, and we have lots of examples of how to speak with the media press releases. Um, we've broken down how to get a state proclamation even. So you can go really far with what we provided and um, do a really good job promoting the hobby. And if you want to go on RC groups and learn more about it, I just put a story up and it has all the, a little bit of the information touches on it. And it has a link to the page that Mandy's talking about. And Jason Cole uh, let me know that he did a story about this a week ago. We don't usually do doubles. But uh, I'm leaving it up because I figured two is better than one. So it up. was last year the first year, Mandy? No, this is actually the fifth year that we've had. <laughs> that's Time that's is really uh, hey, that, that was actually in my article. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, okay. uh, so uh, yeah. we've had five years to get this right. So is it really getting big at this point? Um, yeah. You know, we I think we still have a lot of clubs that don't actually register but participate or just groups of individuals. Um, when we first started, the event was, um, it focused a lot on the fundraising side. So we used to raise money for veteran groups. Um, we started with Wounded Warrior Project. So some people just kind of associate the event with that. Um, but, you know, we've grown. And this year, the national charity is actually the AMA Foundation. Um, so I'll get a plug in for that, too. <laughs> Um, but the AMA Foundation basically supports everything um, the AMA does outside of your insurance and your magazine and your regular membership type things. Um, so we're encouraging clubs to have a fundraiser for that. But if you want to do a different um, fundraiser or no fundraiser, that's fine as well. Awesome. So if you want to be a part of this or find out where it's going on, they have a map that shows you where all these events are going to take place and you can go check it out and find out where you need to head over to. And the date for this is August the 12th. So it's coming up on us right now. Now, where are you going to go, Mandy? Are you going to be at one of these clubs? Or are you going to be at the home field there? Well, we actually celebrated a little early last or for our event at headquarters. Um, we had it last weekend. We had about 500 kids out. And we just, we did some buddy boxing. We had them in the museum. Um, we gave a lot of things away. Um, and we did that because we wanted to host our event in conjunction with Urcha. So the, um, several of us on staff are gonna go to other events. Uh, I'm planning to go to Indianapolis, um, to the Danville area for um, the Black Sheep Squadron event this weekend. Very cool. Let me ask you this. Are you uh, close friends with Jeannie? The Jeannie? Jeannie, the associate editor there at the AMA, are you guys friends? Oh, um, she's probably watching. Yes, we're great friends. No, well, no, we're friends. Um, I have a, I have a secret. So I had to write an art. I do a bi-monthly article in the AMA magazine, and uh, my next article will be all about Jenny. Jenny, or I, th I said, said G Jenny. Yeah. Said oh yeah. Jenny. Okay. Yes. Initially, you said Jeannie. Yeah. Right, didn't he? He was. Yes. Was, that his, was that his Nashville twang coming out? Well, yeah, that uh, and I, I, was, I was going I with you though. Yeah. Yeah. So Jenny uh, is going to be yeah. the feature in my article. So if you ever wondered about the origins of Jenny in the RC field, you can read my upcoming article, "Born to Fly," and learn nice. all about it and see some cool wow. photos too. Sorry, Jenny. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it. A, let, me, let me tell you something, Mandy, as a guy and all three of us do this, you know, we're, and we go to events and we meet thousands of people. Um, I don't have many fears, but, but one thing that always scares me is that I'm going to get somebody's name wrong. 
and I all I try. I don't know if you ever noticed this. I'm being pretty honest here. So I, I try not to use names too often because I'm always afraid I'm gonna get it wrong. And Sounds I just, like me, I just did it. So there you go. <laughs> all right. I knew who you were talking about. Yes. That's great. She's awesome. So um, you're headed out there and this is going to go down and this is your main project, right? You're the one who, uh, this is your baby. Yeah. Um, I took it on. They basically, we had a club in Iowa. Um, one of the members emailed AMA and said, Hey, we should do this annual event. And we all thought it was a great job. So actually, Tim Jeske, uh, District ah. 7 president, um, you know, made it his mission to make it happen and gave it to me. So um, I get a lot of help from other staff members, of course. And our clubs really do most of the work. I, I handle the one here and take care of registrations and putting together all the PR material. But clubs all have to come together and lots of hours and reaching out to communities that they do so i really appreciate everybody that um takes the time to do that i want to say to any of our uh, listeners out there ama members or not with the recent faa registration scare and it definitely had an effect on flyers and not and taking people out of the flying pool uh luckily a lot of those people came back when uh, it was ruled that that was not legal to register us, but that really made me personally aware of the fact that we really need to get out there and promote the hobby more than we were before and shine the light in all the positive ways. And this is one of the best things out there right now. Uh, you declare this a national holiday for the RC hobby, right? Yes. Yes. We're still working on a presidential proclamation, but we oh, hope wow. to get that. Um, so we have several states that proclaim it every year, including Indiana. Um, and our our city here in Muncie always proclaims it as well. So um, yeah, one of our local cities, uh, Tullahoma, just did. I saw oh, that story. Great. Yep, awesome. Yeah, I think they see the connection. Not only is that it's just a fun hobby, but it's really um, a hobby that could be educational. And um, you know, we we need young pilots to come into the hobby, but we also want to introduce them to model aviation because. It could even shape what they choose to do as a career um, and hopefully a lifelong hobby, of course. When I go to Joan All or Oshkosh, I, it never fails that we meet somebody who started out in the hobby and now they fly for the Air Force or they're a designer or it's it totally shaped their life. And, and not only their life, but when these guys are out there designing and changing what we're flying and, and creating new technology, they're changing our lives too. And it all would start with a little airplane. Yeah. Well, Miss Mandy, we should. We sure appreciate you coming out here and hanging out with us and telling us about this. Everybody go out and find one near you and go support the hobby and spread the word. And anything we can do for you, let me know and we'll do it. All right. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. I'm glad you got on. All right. Thanks, guys. See ya. Bye. Bingo. All right. We did it. It was success. We did yeah. it. We did it. So, um, once again, you can go check this out. Um, I'm click. I'm going to rcgroups.com. I'm clicking on the main logo. That just kind of brings you home. And the all RC uh, circle, which is, it looks like a transmitter. You click on that right now. That's the, oh, it's not. It's second story now. Matt Gunn. Matt Gunn is so on the ball. He did a car story while we must have been talking. Holy cow. <laughs> That's funny. That was just right before. Oh, National um, Model Aviation Day. Yeah. To go, to go along with National model aviation day that jason did <laughs> right, let me see jason's so where's yours at down about six seven so right below the little micro timber i'm sure we do it uh the same different ways but if an email comes in i look at every email that comes in from companies and all that stuff and if i see something and i go hmm i just don't delete it or i just leave it unread so this morning i saw this last night and this morning i got up and made that story and uh, we don't double up too much. I we just, don't, but we do sometimes. And it's just because we're so busy and rocking so hard. We all do a really good job of checking uh, to make sure that uh, each one of us has not done or done a story before we do it. So. You know what the worst is, is when you do a, you do a story and you have great photos, you do all yeah. the captions, you get the video, you write a little uh, personal piece at the front and then <laughs> put it up and then you're like, holy cow. And then Matt Gunn goes, I just did that. <laughs> I remember that one. It was, they, I'm like, like, this is such a good story. Dag Nabbit. <laughs> okay, I never said Dag Nabbit until I had kids, and now I talk like Yosemite Sam.
Yeah, rootin' tootin'. I do that too. God, sorry. It. So uh, I want Jason to continue a little bit about his experience on the water. So I got to think that Allie had a hand in designing this plane. I don't have that for sure who the designer is, but. Yeah, I was just, I was actually just having lunch with Mike Hines today and we were talking about the Carbon Z Cub, which we both have had. He still owns one and how it's awesome on the floats and, and flying off the lake as well. And I said, I would give the Cessna 150 uh, twice as much fun on the water as the Cub. Uh, is it I mean, it's just. It's no, it's just, it's hard to describe in words, like how, how different it is, but it, it's just got this feeling of joy, fun. It, it just handles so well. It, it's a good description for a model airplane, feelings of joy. of joy. It's not, and it's not like it's flying itself and you're just Flyest. watching it, but it's so easy to fly that you're, you're just kind of not even thinking about it. You're just enjoying the experience and something about being on the dock. I love that location because we walk, you know, you walk out on the dock. It's got to be long enough to get those giant rowboats in for, you know, eight to 12 people or whatever. Right. So it's like almost in the middle of the inlet. And what that allows you to do is you're not standing on the bank and flying way out. You can fly and land, you know, two feet away from you at the end of the dock and see it up close and personal. And you can come in like behind the flight line, but you're still over the lake and, and make these wraparound turns and fly right next to yourself and right on the water. And so there's just something about it. that's so much fun for me. And that airplane just does a great job at flying off the floats. And the good news is I shot video of it all. So you'll be able to go check it out when his review gets live. That's right. Yeah. I can't wait to see it. Me too. So, so uh, Jason, I hear you have like 89 airplanes to talk about. Today, <laughs> I have, right? I have like, else? I got a bunch of new stuff in to talk about. Most I've of only got two. Most of it's things I've purchased, but, um, so I'll start off with some charging stuff. So I switched all my DLGs over to single cell LiPo batteries instead of two S's with a regulator. And that Good was choice. primarily so I could get the telemetry to my jetty of the actual flight voltage, uh, from the battery directly, um, to my radio. So I was like looking for one S chargers and I've had some stuff. And then, um, I f somebody posted about this. Um, it's a, a, whoops, a, o a, o K O D A A O K O D A. Say that three times. A O K O D A. I guess it's like A O K and then O D A. It's an A O K product. I think that's a -O -K product. Germany based. I used to. I don't know. Work with an but A O K. It's nice and small, and you can. It's got six charge ports, and they're all independent one S chargers, right? So you can hook up six one S batteries, charge them all separately. You can control on this version. This is the CX six ten. You can control the rate from point one to one amp, and you can power it off of a lipo with the XT sixty here. It's got a, a power jack where you can connect a DC power supply. Um, I think oh, it's wow, like pretty, 12 to uh, 22 volts. I and was going to ask you why you didn't do the Strix one, but that one seems to have more features. Yeah, this, it's also got USB out, so you can charge your cell phone from it as well. And then it's got a USB in, so basically when I'm at the flying field, I hook up my little portable battery bank, and you can charge all your 1S packs directly from that. You know, nice and portable. Very small and compact, easy to take with you. And it was only like, I don't even remember how much it was, like less than $20. It might have been like eight or nine bucks or something for the charger. So really happy with that. And then on the other charging front, you guys remember the ISDT uh, Q6 that Matt oh, and I yeah. bought at, the, um, at Toledo? Well, I, I liked this charger so much that I decided to purchase the bigger boy, the D2. Ah, oh, did you reach out to? They're advertising with us now, I think. Are they? I did, yeah. I just I ordered it from Buddy RC. Maybe and not. I guess some people are taking advantage of their hey, hype right now. Speaking of, um, uh, one of the guys in the live chat just requested that we have a link. So what I'm going to do here is, uh, here, Jason, I've, I've got it. It's in my Aokita Aokota lithium battery tester article where we talk about it. I actually put a link because most people were buying from like Banggood and then it was taken forever. And then I bought mine from Amazon and it Amazon prime. And here is the link coming right up fellas. So you like that charger better? There you go. Well, so this charger, I was like, I love the Q6 and it's nice and portable and small, but it's only a single output port at a time. Right. 
I'm usually charging lots of battery, so I wanted to have more options. So I've got two dual, and it's dual 200 watts a piece. So you can charge a lot of stuff, a lot of big stuff. The only downside is is it's AC only. There's no DC input. Oh, uh, that would be charger. a downside. So it's only a downside if it's a downside. There's a five volt, two uh, two amp USB port here. So if I want to use this at the field because it's so small and portable and compact, and I want to use it at the field, I also picked up. Wait, wait, wait! Who made that last charger? Uh, that's the ISDT. ISDT. You can get them at Buddy RC. A few places sell them. Um. Anyway, so charging at the field is no longer a problem. Well, look I mean, at that thing. Is that a, a river? Uh, Cuisinart? Do what? Is that a Cuisinart? I think that's a Bose uh, speaker system. It's a Bose. No, wait a minute. That's one of those uh, oxygen uh, nebulizers. <laughs> that's a nebulizer. I think that's a diabetes tester. That is definitely a blood sugar tester. Yeah. Check your blood sugar. Check it often. So this is another like purchase I was super excited about. So you can see how big it is. I want it. It's got a handle. It's 11 pounds. It's nothing. Um, so here's what we've got. So I'll turn it on. Real quick, before you even get there, how many amp hours is it? It's like 120,000. Or 120, 120 amps. Dude, amp amp that's hour nice. So here's the best part. So we've got two uh, USB ports, two USB quick charge ports, two USB-C charge ports, C. two DC output ports, 12-volt. Man. DC. And the DC will put out uh, 200 watts um, on the DC side, right? And so that's great. You can plug in your 12 volt DC chargers. You can charge your phones, your all your stuffs off of that. Turn it around, and then now you've got a uh, uh, cigarette lighter, 12 volt cigarette lighter plug. You've Is got your car. Is that what that's for? Two AC outlets. If you can see that. Nice. Now. Yeah. 110s. Run yeah. 110 volts. Out. They make a 220 volt version for the European dudes. He said, I could, he said I could run my guitar amp off. You can of run your guitar amps off this, mini fridges. Um, but the AC side is 300 watts. Okay. And then you, so you can do both at the same time. So you can get a total of 500 watt. And while, you know, Hornets is saying that isn't much, it's quite a bit uh, for all but just like the most largest battery packs. I can charge both of my 6S 5 amp milliamp hour batteries at uh, full rate and not max this thing out. So it's super handy. Cost? Wait, before uh, you tell them the cost, show them the cigarette lighter. I did. I thought I did. It's got a, well, no, it's got a built-in cigarette lighter on it. Yeah. Oh, so could, the, would that work for that? I didn't even think of it. No, nah, I don't think you could literally put a cigarette thing in there, but. Mm, well, maybe. Oh, yeah, you could. That. Okay. That's, that's just. Who those. uses the, Are those even around anymore? That's insane. Okay, go ahead. I'm anyway, so it's Cadillac. perfect for you know camping or especially going out the field. Like I'm gonna have this up with me at the Bruce where I'm camping out all weekend. This is gonna oh, charge my laptops, my phones. You know, my, it'll keep my my battery things topped off. Your fan, uh, my yeah fan, anything like that. Um, it's just beautiful and so small and lightweight. But it's five hundred dollars. Oh, um, oh, it's a little pricey. But I was like, it's so worth it. You can I was use wondering. it as a backup. You know, you keep it plugged in. It holds its charge. It only minimally loses its charge in a year. So you could you could not even have it plugged in and just, you know, need it in a year if the power goes out and you need to do something. Like I was saying, if the power goes out here and I need an internet, I can hook my modem up into this because I've got fiber, and so that'll still be working, and so I could have internet. Um, That's so a gold zero. Have you heard about the gold zero Yeti? 400? Yeah, this is better, much better, much higher output than the, the Yetis. Okay, Even so this is Goal Zero 400 is 459. Yours is not much more, but it, it does a lot. It, it has more output power for sure, Good. yeah. Okay. And oh, it's yeah, lighter and smaller, good. and it has a better battery management system. And one of the cool things, let me put it here. So on this left side, it says off right now. Oh, I was turning it off, I guess. Uh, <laughs> it has watts. So as you're plugging in things and powering it, you can Bobby see. Watts. Bobby Watts. Bobby nice. Watts. You can see Bobby go. Watts' image in this LCD. Shoot him again. But it'll tell you how many watts it's use or it's drawing. So you can it's kind of cool to know those things, like how much wattage is my charger actually pulling when I'm charging at this, whatever, because there's some loss and efficiency and all that stuff. So it's just interesting to see uh, that information. You've got how many uh, runtime hours is left, and then it actually goes down to to the minute of charge time left on this, and then you've got a nice little battery indicator there on the right. Who makes this thing? This is a this was a startup and it, this was an Indiegogo project is how it originally started, but the guys actually came from DJI. 
What? So these are DJI drone engineers that wanted to create this power system, and they did it. Uh, one of the original ideas was for charging drone batteries. You can charge your Mavic packs and your Phantom batteries and all that stuff off of this. It's got enough power for that. So they left DJI and started this company. It's called it's River. It's River. called it's called EcoFlow. Is the River. company name? This is the River Mobile Power Station. But are we going to see a review on this? Uh, I might do it. I paid for this. It's not yeah. something that they sent me. I just wanted it, and I did an That's article nice. on it, uh, you know, a month or two back. But I love it. It'll be at all the events. Jim T could plug his guitars in here and, and the amps and all that stuff and play without having to find a wall outlet. And so very cool. It'll keep our laptops charged up. All that good stuff. Did you say it accepts 12 volts input for charging it or not? Uh, it's yes. So there's three ways to charge it. You can do a outlet, AC outlet. Um, you can do a cigarette 12 volt car yeah. outlet and then it has they've got two different uh wattage solar panels that you can actually I, solar i charge was just it. thinking you can my next question solar panel, really you don't have to buy their solar panels so you can use any one yeah that's, you can use anyone you want that's prepper town usa right there yeah totally. population you <laughs> two. Right, i got one more product yeah and this just came in yesterday is it the underwear from Bang? Boom! Hey, the hey, everyone! It's the listen, crotchless underwear from Bang. You get an ad, an email from Banggood, and there's an underwear ad in it, and you click on it because you're wondering <laughs> what the heck that is. Don't do it because you're going to see underwear ads for the rest of the month on the internet. So yeah, just nice. Saying. You can't purge your eyes from seeing that beautifulness. <laughs> Who needs cheetah, cheetah print buttless underwear? I'll, I'll oh show my gosh. Me. Anyway, right, what so you got there? That's better than some guys of these. like me. This is the Multiplex Fun Glider. It, I I went and looked back at an Archie Group's post that was made. And it, they like announced it or had images of this back in 2015. And Suzanne from High Tech said, "Who would want to fly this?" And I said, "I know a short haired guy who'd be into it." <laughs> I like gliders, but so I'm really also excited about this because I have uh, to say this: I like turtles. I like turtles. Okay. Uh, no but this is like the ultimate travel stuff. plane. If you want a plane that packs up, you can get a little mini uh, case. And the wing has this really cool design. Let's see if I can show you. Uh, it's got this locking mechanism. So if I push this down, you All right, can, I'm going to. Yeah, gonna just what? tell you right now Multiplex <laughs> is the king of these unique clicking yeah. thing that yeah. my uh, Soleus is a prime example. Something I've never seen before is how they mount their wings, and that is unique. Yeah, Everyone, so pardon, pardon Matt Gunn while he goes and watch the uh, turtle video real quick. I just <laughs> sent you a link to. I got his bloop. I got some wings anyway, going. So you pull the wings off. You pull the tails off. They're just a snap-in design, too. And then you can pack it up into this like, nice little travel case um, and Have take it with it? you on vacation. Has it been in the air yet? Hasn't been in the area. I just built. I don't even know what battery. That I looked at all the literature. I can't find what battery to use. 2S or 3S or what size. So I've still got to do some research. But I took the box photos and the assembly stuff and all that. It literally is like a two minute put together. Like just, it's all done. Everything's ready to go. This is the RR version. So you just got to provide your <laughs> receiver, your battery, and you're ready to go. Well, it looks so. awesome. And so uh, everyone can expect a review on this and a five video. Yeah, photos. I'm excited about it. It's going to be really yeah. nice. All and right, zombie, Matt Gunn. zombie kid likes turtles. Zom like if, if you want to know the I like turtles, I like turtles. Uh, you just Google zombie kid likes turtles. Go watch it. It's awesome. Oh, boy, that was just They're so following. not needed in the middle of a podcast and yet so perfect. <laughs> There's other I like, videos. I like turtles. They went and talked to this kid about what we <laughs> And he is a normal kid. There's nothing wrong with that kid. He just was excited the camera was on it. Nice. Yeah. So is it my turn now to show you some neato things? Uh, I, while you're getting ready to show your stuff off? Okay. Um, I, I feel compelled to show the zombie kid. Yeah, do it. I can actually get the sound if you want. Yeah, yeah. I'll let you do it because I have 8,000 windows open. In that I, I can't get the video. Oh, yeah, I can. All right, here we go. Okay, Let's everyone, this is the I Like Turtles. It comes, uh, I get to use this about once a month. Wait a minute. Um, okay, here and we... Once again, nothing wrong with this kid. All right, so I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to go to... Is that fair? <laughs> what do we make it happen? All right, are you guys... Uh, are you guys... Can you see my no, screen? No, you won't be able to hear the sound, though. No, I got it. I got it. You ready? Live at the Waterfront Village with my friend, the zombie, Jonathan. You're looking good. Jonathan just got an awesome face paint job. What do you think? I like turtles. 
Good One more time, time. Oh. Jonathan just got an awesome face paint job. What do you think? I like turtles. All right, you're great. <laughs> that made him this famous, by the way. Is called banter. I think <laughs> they put they put that kid through college on that video, right? There. Oh, they should have, because he looks menacing and yet he's very sweet. <laughs> As a father, I just related. When you uh, said I, I don't know what you're talking about, I'm like, oh, I get to share. I like turtles with Mac. Guy. Oh man! This all right, is, so Matt has awesomeness over there. What you? Yeah, got? yeah. So first of all, you guys know that I finished up my uh, recruit review, the ready-made RC recruit, and um, it was very, very popular. And I can understand why a lot of people liked it. Got lots of comments. We got some some uh, mixed reviews. Some people saying this isn't a beginner aircraft. Some people saying, um, "What are you talking about?" You know, standard procedure. What but here it is. About? Yeah, you've seen the plane. I don't know if you guys have seen the review. I got this gigantic microphone here. I am literally learning to uh, to try to work around. Here we go. Ah, there we are. It's the recruit, and it has no camera in it right now. I did not know how I was going to feel about this, and it's my new favorite plane. And uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, literally, it fly. It does not fly fast whatsoever. It's not designed to. But, but it flies long. Oh my gosh, I flew it. I went out to the Aurora Flying Aces, met my friend, uh, the chief out there, and he is the chief of police for Cuyahoga uh, Community College. He flies model airplanes with me. And the chief and I went out there, and he put his hands on the sticks of this one and got to fly. And he is just getting started in FPV. He has a, a, a Ranger, and he flies that around a little bit FPV, but he's not. He told me, uh, I'm quoting him, he's not 100% confident yet. So I let him put him on the sticks of this guy. And this sucker flew for 35 minutes on a 3S2200. And we landed with about 11% left on the battery. Now that, yeah, that's taking it down pretty low. But the fact that you can fly 35 minutes at half throttle on this plane is just amazing. I, I really can't uh, say anything else good about that because... We actually killed the battery in the um, in the run cam for being on for 35 minutes. It, just right. that. it wasn't fully charged, but it's just it goes to show you that uh, this is a great beginner airplane for beginner FPV. This is one of the talking points in the uh, review thread is that people are saying this is not a good beginner airplane if you've never flown before, and we're not really marketing as that. It's designed as your uh, your switch over airplane from going from flying line of sight to flying FPV or flying uh, multi-rotors to flying fixed wing FPV. It's a great plane for that. Tell uh, us about the gyro and how it... Uh, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and take a look at that. It has a two-axis right there, two-axis gyro built in. It's already tuned. All you need to do is hook it up to your uh, channel here on your transmitter and pick a three-position or a two-position switch. Now, a three-position switch will default to off in the middle and then each end of the switch is going to be 2d and 3d 3d being full control but it uh gets rid of some of the wind and then 2d always stabilizes and i you can launch it hands off put the transmitter down and throw it and it will climb out just like a uh, spectrum with as3x oh wow so, yep does it we did it a couple times uh, the gyro doesn't actually ever need to be turned off. It can fully fly all the time in 2D mode, excuse me, 3D mode. And you really can't tell too much of a difference except for it bounces around a little more. Now, some people were also saying that the outboards of these wings are very, let's see, are very uh, loose. And I'm bending it here, and that's how much it bends right there. So on a plane that weighs 660 grams, I will take that little bit of movement with a grain of salt. It really doesn't do anything. And the plane isn't supposed to be on rails and give you cinematic video all the time. It's designed to be a good trainer and to have fun. So yeah, it bounces around a little bit. You get some movement in the wind, but that's part of it. And if that is too much for you, if you don't like watching the video because it's bouncing, maybe it's not the plane for you. I don't know. But my point is, is that it's a great airplane. It really surprised me. I did not think I was going to be this into it, 
and I love going out and flying this thing at any time because uh, it's uh, it's quick and it only takes a 3S2200. I have like 12 of them sitting around. So good machine. You can check out the review. Almost, almost nothing. It's said 80. Yeah, 80, 84 dollars with the gyro, with the motor, with the ESC, with two 9-gram servos. And then 150 or so dollars, you get a um, FR Sky transmitter and a ready-made RC Orange 3S2200. Not too shabby. I prefer, obviously, the first version because I have so many transmitters lying around. So here's another toy that I was playing with and I thought you guys might like to see. It's the Torrent 110 from Blade. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, so I got it, you know, and... I was uh, initially a little concerned. It had a few bad uh, feedback reports on it that it had vibrations and it wasn't tuned well. Well, I'm here to say that that is completely false or they've changed something because there's no vibration whatsoever. Um, the, the motors are a little noisy. That's kind of a given, but there's no vibrations. And I think that's what people thought was happening was that the sound of these motors inside of the uh, protectors here makes sort of a, a vibration noise, but I actually was hovering it, put my finger on it, touched it, there's no vibrations out of the ordinary. The camera feed looks awesome, and uh, it's tuned really well, too. It flies extremely well. It's like a giant, tiny whoop, so I flew it all around the house. Uh, is, is it like an Inductrix uh, Senior? It is an Inductrix Senior, in my opinion, but it has loads, loads, loads more power. I mean, Tell me it, about that FPV camera. Is it a full backyard rig? I mean, I can get pretty Yep, absolutely. This is an outdoor machine. This camera is, um, you know what? I apologize. It's a transmitter, right? I thought it was a, a 150. Oh, but 150, it, yeah. It's even more than that, yeah. 150, sure? by the way, is enough. Yeah, oh, when you gosh. figure that out. But I can tell you, 200 milliwatt will get almost anything you need done and Unless you're breaking some sort of FAA law. I know. So let's go ahead and, and check why, um, why I got you guys while we're talking about it. And we will see what it has. So it's got a 120 degree field of view. It does have a 150 milliwatt VTX on it. It's uh, got beta flight preloaded. And uh, you get a 3S450. Uh, uh, hey, I, I don't have a 3S450. This is a 2S800. So I get a little over three minutes of flight time. How much does that cost? This little guy is one ninety nine. Why are you getting all the cool stuff? I begged for this one, guys. So I, I do like it a lot. I think it flies exceptionally well. It is just like a giant, tiny whoop, tiny inductrix, and it's great for outdoors as well. I mean, it can fly in the wind uh, pretty darn well. Oh, and here's a <laughs> warning for all you guys. If you have a 5.8 gig uh, router in your house, don't fly this near it because it will shut that puppy down. Wow. <laughs> I flew it right up next to my range extend, extender downstairs. I have a 5.8 gig uh, right. uh, extender in the wall. I flew it right by it and then landed and then came in here and no internet. And I went and looked wow. at it and it was totally on the fritz. It locked up <laughs> and shut, it shut down when you get 150 milliwatts next to it. That's wow. funny. So, yeah, enough. it locked up and that was that. So um, when will we see that review? You uh, you test flew it. I would, I would say it should be live in about two weeks. I'm going to have uh, Matt Nowakowski fly it for me while I do the uh, video and photography. And he's a really good pilot, a local guy here. you got to get a hat like this, man. You just mount the camera on the bill of your hat and fly it around your head. And you know, I like that. that it, only, it only goes so far, though. I need that zoom. So, you know, how it rolls. But I'm happy with it, and I'm here to say that any reports about vibrations and bad flight – Nah, Just use the Connex in the uh, Performance Plus mode, and you'll get the zoom, all the zoom you want. There you go, man. <laughs> there you go. So that's all I got. I'm going to try to find a video real quick. It just uh, struck me here. Someone asked if the run cam split will fit in there. Uh, that's a possibility. You might end up cutting about a minute of flight time off of it, though. But, yes, I think you could. Let's see. Ooh, listen to all that dead air. I know. It's really happening, y'all. I'm actually, I'm actually uh, writing a company, I won't name the name, that's got the Connex ProSight HD HXH, whatever, camera. 
but they've got it listed at the $99 price instead of the $79 price that it should be. So I'm like, are you guys going to lower that price down so I can purchase it or what? Because I want it. You should write or what afterwards. I hope okay. You okay. So this is just, it's RC related, but it's kind of funny. And I'll tell you why as we watch the video. I'm going to share okay. my screen now. Is there sound? Everyone. There's no sound, but we don't need it for uh, what's happening. Are you guys seeing my screen? Oh, yeah. Okay. We have Johnny FPV. I don't know if you know this, but I, I uh, my wife laughs every time. I call it Johnny Law, Johnny Mustache, Johnny Haircut, Johnny on the Spot. It's all Johnny to me. So that's Johnny <laughs> FPV talking. I know exactly where they're standing. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is Joe Nall. So this just came up on my feed, and and it's uh, Jeski uh, telling him why he's a Futaba uh, transmitter guy, right? So it up, uh, yeah. So we're on. So in the background, I see a guy. It, it's the video stopped. Dang, nab it, internet. <laughs> yep. Okay, here we go. Here we go. All right, here we are. are. So in the background, there's a guy in a blue shirt. Now I haven't seen him yet. There and, he is. Uh, and uh, he's got himself some ice cream. And now you know he's hot. You know it's like <laughs> 90 degrees, and he's been sweating all day. But he's got some ice cream. And he's, he's stumbling, stumbling down that hill. Hey, hey, oh, I got to get me a bite. Hold on. The car's coming. I'll get me a bite. Maybe I'll take another one. All right. I see it. I'll, I'll shoot the gap. And then he walks right at the camera. And then he takes, right as he gets here, he stops and looks. Okay. The funny part is that's a friend of mine. That's Brian English. Okay. And when I, he's a pro bro. He comes to pro bro every year. And when I saw this video, I was like, oh, hold on. Wait a minute. I rewind the tape. And then I stuck it on his Facebook page and all I posted was wait for it. Wait for it. How would you like to not know you're in a video? And then I send it to you. And then you're like center frame stare, eating ice cream. You know, I really thought he was going to drop the ice cream or trip. I did not know <laughs> that you knew this guy. I just thought it was going to be like one of those moments. And while we're here, look Thanks, at that guy. Nice to meet you. Getting a handshake, that's 10 points right there. Johnny <laughs> FPV, young new pilot. And, and you got to think, now we've known this guy, uh, Mr. Jeske, since he was a kid. But look, he, he's good looking. He's uh, probably in his uh, Simidana. 30s. Now. But I'm just saying, that here's a new guy <laughs> getting support from an old guy who's an established pilot who owns his own company, who oh, flies yeah. for the government. Who, and he and he's, uh, looks like he could uh, you know put on a uh, suit and fight crime in a minute. And uh, nice. a great RC moment right there uh, with a friend of mine eating ice cream. I just wanted to share that with y'all. That was a good one. That, that, I like that. I like that. That's, All right. Uh, and before we shout get out, out of to here, your friends. Uh, here's my latest leather creation, everybody. Nice. Yeah. I, I got a little fancy. This is actually the exact same design used on the Jesse James holster the day he was shot. What? So, yeah. So um, I added some some brass studs here anyway. Hey, I did find out that the new camera is $99. They lowered the price on the original camera to $79. So the new one is still the same original full price. FYI. FYI. Do you think the image quality is that much better? Because if it is, I think I'm going to pick one up. I'm buying one right now, so I'm going to find out. All right. It's still pre-ordered. I don't know when they're going to actually ship, but it shouldn't be too long. The way they're you showing said that. Like, product images. The way you said that made me want to tell you to simmer down now. Simmer down. <laughs> I'm down now, Jason. You know what? I should have said that when you were talking to the guy on the dock. <laughs> you should have whispered it. Sit it down. Sit it down. Sit it down. Uh, by the way, we're shooting video, dude. Sit uh, down. What are you doing? I actually, now? I right. reviewed the footage. I totally have that entire conversation on tape. <laughs> you should in that. audio. <laughs> that guy was. I could tell it was not going good. And I don't mess with authority. Because you never win. Yeah, you are. You always mess with authority. That was your like middle name in the '90s, wasn't it? No, I never. I I, I don't fight the law because the law always wins. No, that's and, and let me tell that to any of our young listeners. Uh, if you get pulled over for a ticket, it's yes sir, no sir, giving yeah, your yeah. license. Just go with it. Just Simmer go down. With it. That's not good. Yeah. Jason, are you? Are, do you have info for us? Because we're heading up to the uh, we got to go time. Uh, info for what? On the price of that cam that you're ordering right now, simmer oh, down there. Yeah, ready-made's got them for ninety-eight, ninety-nine, and that's the actual price. 
All right. 98, 98. Pre-order. I just pre-ordered it in. I've got my order in. I'm on the list. Jason Cole buying all the cool stuff. You Tell you what, I got I got all the cool stuff, man. Check it out. Oculus. I've been Oculusing. Oh yeah. So Matt Gunn's life was changed when he bought an Oculus Rift. And um, he said that uh, you tell us about your flying full scale in that thing. Oh my God. I still get sick. I don't know what it is, man. I fly. I've flown full scale since I was in my twenties. Let me stop. You. We're, we're talking. The Oculus Rift is 3d headset. Uh, bring that back into frame there. And Here they're on go. sale now for three ninety nine. They used to be like seven ninety nine or something. Hey, do I look like uh, Anakin Skywalker <laughs> when he's wearing that mask right now? Or maybe that guy from that movie totally. in the eighties. Uh, hey, this has got to be oops. our um, our header image for this, right? Yeah, okay, okay, that's it. <laughs> so Matt went and grabbed him a pair, Woo! and then he went up into an ultralight, and then he vomited. No, I did not vomit. I did not <laughs> barf. I hate that word vomit. Why do I hate that? Anyway, I didn't Gosh. puke. Spewing I, this. I just uh, got a little bit queasy because every single time I fly in that game, Ultra Wings, or what is it called? Ultra Wings? Ultra Wings. Every time I fly it, man, I get massive McFeelies in my stomach. When is it because you're trying to look out the window? No, yeah, I'm looking out the window. It just feels like you're really flying. I cannot be any more serious how realistic it feels being in the cockpit of a plane, even in a world that looks like Minecraft. Like um, if it, everything's chunky, there's no, um, it doesn't look real at all, but the inside of the airplane looks real. And when you're flying, you start banking and I'm leaning. And the first time I ever did, it was like 12 at night and I'm sitting up late at night, trying it out. I just bought the game 29 95 or whatever. And I almost fell out of this chair. I was leaning up and then I crashed the plane. It's an ultralight. It has very realistic flight controls. So you, you use uh, these things right here, by the way, you see this right here. You put one on each hand, and you have uh, it's it's legitimately um, put your hands inside the VR. So I'm grabbing the control yoke of the plane. I'm flying around, very very real, and I bank too hard and stall the plane, and I crash it. And as I'm going in, I'm leaning back like this, going, "Oh God, no!" And then I crashed, and then I went, "Oh man, this is literally that must be what it feels like the second before you." die in an airplane <laughs> it was not cool it was I really was i can't i don't even know how much more i can take of this game because it's uh very realistic my son vrs every day and i have two things that i would warn you about that i see all the time one stay away from windows i have almost yeah. put my hand through glass and i've seen other people like you know trying to control it so don't get near a window b if you have small children in the room they always tend to want to stand next to you. And I've literally seen a dad punch his son in the face. Like, oh my God. He's in the goggles and the goggles. And then he just jabbed bam <laughs> right in that kid's face. Dude, um, it's just, it's very real. Um, it's very easy to get screwed up and to fall over. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Yeah. But anyway, um, I like the, uh, Oculus riffs a whole lot and at 399. They're a pretty good deal. And then I did the Oculus Rift developer mod where you can change the pixels. Have you done that, Jason? Yeah, you can uh, super sample. I did that, and I didn't notice a, a crazy difference, but I did notice enough that I use it whenever I play now. So. Yeah, cool. Yeah, And my uh, uh, GTX 1070 can take it pretty good all the yeah. way up to, to super sample number two. Usually it's 1.5. We the still max. need to take a night or some time when you're available and let's play together. I want to, yeah. you know, we need to co-op some stuff. Should be and fun. We, and we have War Thunder together too, man. Oh, yeah. They have War Thunder on there as well, which is really cool. But, yeah, I hear you, Jason. I'm down. Just got to find some free time. So. Yep, yep, yep. Well, I want to thank Matt Gunn yep. for uh, hanging out with us and doing all the reviews and all the Flying Giants and all the RC Group stories that he does on a weekly basis. I want to thank Jason Cole for uh, – uh, being uh, hyper vigilant on docks. That's right. And, and uh, I think this might be my new motto going forward. If it ain't fun, don't do it. You should change it to Doc Talk. That's the name of your uh, <laughs> put your name under there. I also <laughs> want to thank uh, Johnny FPV. And He's got uh, a limp handshake. You better close that thumb around, or else it's not. <laughs> it's kind of a. 
Let's see. Hold on. We can tell in a second. Here we go. Ready? And... I know. I know he does it. Hey, hey, oh. Way to save yourself, John. You know what? If he's really cool, he'd pull Andrew towards him as a power move. You know, and not... a, yeah. Oh man, look at the. There's a massive amount of. He pulls uh, him in and is like, "I'm going for you, old man." There's some kinetic energy right there in that handshake. Let's analyze this handshake. We can't <laughs> bang, bang, <laughs> and release. Oh. That was hundred percent. Uh, Clash that, of the Titans. That was a mutual look at that. Bang, bang, out. Boom, out. Bang. Awesome. Somebody held on for a couple extra seconds there. Let's, see. let's look one more time. I don't know. Ready? <laughs> let's see what Andrew's right. made out Ready? of here. Watch. Johnny, don't let, Johnny, Johnny don't let go. Johnny don't let go. Oh. Chink. <laughs> Pretty good. I give that an A-plus handshake. You guys ever uh, limp handshake people just to see their reactions? <laughs> Negative. I usually don't go there. but. Oh, that's cool. awesome. Well, you should. We need to do that, at Jonal, Everybody. <laughs> we'll be, and then we'll say, "Simmer down now." Oh yeah. <laughs> pan shake, simmer down, and then uh, we'll see what uh, we'll see what Bob Sadler uh, turns it into. Simmer there down now, Lip Pan Jake, Lip Biscuit. <laughs> Lip Biscuit. <laughs> All right, everybody. You've spent another hour on a Thursday with the RC Groups team. Um, I hope that we didn't go off the off the no, we script did. too many so times good. there. Yeah, I'm fully good. flying giants today. Fly, flying giants hat, flying giant shirt. And uh I like your uh dramatic lighting in the back too. Ooh, yeah, thank you. I, I did that right before the show. Uh move that guitar because I thought this light is so hot. I was like, you're probably warping the front of that guitar, so you might want to move it. Whoa. Um what am I doing? I have video the expert literally sitting in a bag over here. So I need fly. to put that video together. The one thing Jason and I didn't do is fly the expert into our palm and spin it around. So I might try to do that in the backyard and get my daughter to shoot it with my phone. Mm -hmm. So you have that to look forward to. Jason has a lot of video footage to cut and Matt Gunn has reviews and footage coming out. Although the recruits out now, you can go look at that uh, as soon as you want. Right. Matt Gunn? Right. Oh yeah. Well, we want to thank you guys for watching. We held a nice, consistent live viewership. We want to thank Mandy from the AMA for figuring out how to join us online. Some people can't get that handled, and I don't, I, I've never been on that side of it, so I don't know what the exact problem is, but she made it work, right? Good. Yeah. Yep. All right. And uh, uh, summer, with, summer without tomatoes. I can't Fly think of a worse like, summer. Fly it like you rented it. That's what pick I want. Pick a ripe one. Do not pick a hard one. <laughs> it's a song homegrown tomatoes you can look homegrown that up tomatoes. beans greens tomatoes potatoes yams something else and i don't know <laughs> i like turtles <laughs> simmer down now i like potatoes I shut like her down now shut her down